let's reset and let's now clean up our code a bit so we're done using this for now so you can delete this or save it for your reference let's go back to our original path of two points so point one and point two and we're adding them in the for loop compile the code run your simulation and you can see the vehicle is traveling on a straight line now by default the interpolation of the vehicle's path is zero so that's why you have kind of a linear motion to point one and a linear motion to point two but you can change this interpolation value so reset your simulation and after you define the speed of the vehicle let's now set the interpolation property of the vehicle to 0 0.35 because by default this value is zero and that's why you get the straight lines so 0 0.35 should give us a slight curve in the vehicle's path compile your code run the simulation and yep whoop 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 so we get a nice little curve to the out when the vehicle accelerates to pass through P1 because it's not going to skip P1 it still has to go through it and then the vehicle curves out again to stop at P2 let's reset and see what happens when we use an interpolation of 0 0.8 compile the code run the simulation and we get a much bigger curve out so the vehicle decelerates slows down and then accelerates quickly to go through P1 and does the same to end up at P2 here reset and whenever you are using an interpolation value greater than one you're gonna see some funky movement or some chicken dancing from your vehicle so let's use 1.5 for interpolation compile the code run the simulation and <laughs> you can see the vehicles going all over the place so in most cases you probably don't want that I find that 0 0.25 or 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 gives you you know some good results but let's actually change interpolation back to zero and if we compile our code run the simulation we are back to the straight lines